Hello and welcome everyone. Um, following up to our last video, we'll be doing a breakdown of um, music videos. I like music videos because they're a lot more creative. They're, it's almost like the, um, the perfect point for where everything goes. So this will just be an informal video, not as we'll walk through several scenes in the music video we'll be looking at. And hopefully you can take one or two things and apply it to your own scenario. And um, the video we'll be breaking down today is um, Yoga, the recent one by Ashake. Um, so we'll just dive into into it. So first of all, let's just scroll through the video and see what's available, okay? Uh, so first of all, we see him, he's going on his spirit journey. Now he's meditating and we have some group of women going through a dark alley. Meditation continues. The women has arrived at the shore bank with gifts in their hands. He's still meditating, connecting to his spirit mother or his inner spirit, whatever the theme of the video is. And yeah, the director of video, T.J. Murray, a very um, famous director. Um, now we have the masquerade scenes and they continue for a bit. A couple more B-rolls of the arrival, the name of the video. Uh, we'll see more bureaus and we'll see more buses. Then we'll see some performance and some performance again. And uh, yeah, that's about it of the video because it's just um, different scenes being recut. So we'll just go through all these things and see how it was lit, okay? So let's go back to the beginning again, okay? I'll be using a black man zones to explain how light is distributed rather than force color. The reason why I use a black man zones is a black man zone displays things in stops, like you can see on my screen. Neutral gray is gray, half stop is there, we have one stop, and they're all color coded. The reason why I prefer black man zones to force color is that if I go to force color, right, and I say, okay, let's use false color. Um, I'll enable it on my other nodes, right, and you can see it's just displayed in IRA values. You can't really tell the difference in the stop dynamics between whether this side of the image is one stop brighter, but you can just say, okay, this is now um, 50 IRA on your waveform, it's now 70 IRA. What does that mean in terms of stops of light? Because we are cinematographers, we work with stops of light and not um, IRA values. That's for like the camera engineers to go figure that out you get when you're a cinematographer when it's when you tell you that this is two stop brighter you already know that okay for a thing to be stop brighter it means it has double the brightness or double the intensity to be able to gain one stop so two stops brighter is like four stops you get so if we go back now uh, let's go back to using um 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 a light man zones okay and like you can see um, for the first entrance scene where he's like just working and it's like sunset, this is like probably around 5.30 or so depending on where you are because the sun behaves differently. Um, the ground is the middle gray area. Um, the white that he's wearing, you can see is about four stops of exposed and all these details held. Basically this is where um, the Ari camera shines through with the entire full 14 stops of dynamic range it has. and. Um, to the right of the frame, you're supposed to probably get more neg, but I can tell that there is a mirror source coming in because you would see, you can see how elevated it is, it's three stops, which is like if you use a mirror hard like to bounce the sun, that will probably fill into the shadows hard and the white will be able to pick up um, that much exposure as opposed to the covert that you can see that's been hit by the sun, that you can see to the um, left side of the frame here. This covert here, you can see how it's neutral gray. That's what the normal values should be, and probably one stops on the exposed as opposed to um, this side of his shoulder, where you can see it's like three stops overexposed already. You get it. so yeah. So this combination goes for like um, a sandwich between the sun, the character, and some mirror bounce that's filling into the shades. Um, then we continue where we get to see more of the Alexa strength directly looking to the sun. And you can tell if we turn on first color, you can see the sun is like four stops of our exposed against um, the one stop on the exposed where his face and the skin is, which gives you a contrast ratio of five to one, like one stop, five stops darker than um, um, the main key, like you barely touch middle gray that's just on the white hat and his face is like one stop on the exposed. Okay. Maybe um, um, if the shot was a little bit, if they framed the sun a little bit out of the frame, they would have been able to manage the exposure more because it would be closer and the contrast ratio gap would not be as high as it is. 
um, yeah. So yeah, we continue and we get to this shot. Now this shot is interesting because um, if you go forward in the video where you get to see the reverse shot, you get to see that the sun is actually coming from somewhere this side of the frame somewhere this side like to the other side of screen that's where it's coming from hitting you get and because um the girl's skin is lighter to his skin she becomes a stop brighter and you can tell there's some kind of diffusion that's there that's actually just softening up the light and now his face is exposed at um, neutral gray and she becomes way more hotter and as you can see from the sun direction, if you look at the um, buildings um, in the corner, the shadows will tell you um, where the sun is coming from. But against the sky, the sky is now set at three stops of exposure, um, which is interesting. This is what the cinematographer or the creator was thinking when they were thinking of um, shooting this. And you can see how the white is blazingly hot, you get. And I'm guessing they massaged it a lot more so it could come down to this level because the white is like close to like clipping. Because it's just white, there's not there's no range in there. It's not like he's wearing a um a tea stained shirt or something that's off-white or something that was like being able to be brought down or so you get. So maybe a double net that they would have used to target just the body above the head, but would have probably knocked down that white by one stop to make it a little bit more um in range. But yeah. All the same, beautiful shot. Um, so we'll go to these women in the alley. Now, this alley plays strictly to contrast and alleyway lights, whereby the sun is not in the sky, which is why they're in the shade. So it's just the clouds that's actually lighting them. Where you get, and the sun is probably come from the right side of the frame when you give the shadows that you can see into the distance. So it creates this contrast that the focal point of the image is somewhere around the center, right? And you just have skylights that's just opening the shadows. So you could expect, like the women, if we check first color, there'll be like two stops on the exposed or one stop on the exposed, like you can see. Even the greens around them are now like four stops on the exposed, really digging into the shadows. You get as to contrast the scene you're coming from that's super bright. So, um, yes, we continue again with side profile shot, that same shot, but a new angle. Because the sun is coming from the left side of the frame, somewhere around this side, you can see that this is the dark side. You can see the contrast ratio on him. He's now one stop on the exposed to his face as, the, as opposed to the other side, this side of the face that is about one stop hotter. So there's like a two stop gap between the values that are here and the values that are here. But there's also like a mirror bounce that is edging the lady out of the shot. Um, the mirror bounces, you can see it on her shoulder. When you look at Foscall, you can see how it brings up the level there, even at the back of her ears, because if we go forward in time and you get to, let's just skip forward to some other point whereby that shot came up here. If you get to see it here, this is the true levels of what that should have looked like. Like if you're, if you are like staying within the cinematic universe of film, but this is music videos, anything goes. We just wanted to catch our um, viewers' attention, make it pop, make it beautiful. We usually don't pay attention to reality. So yeah, there's that. So you get to see when I say there's a mirror bounce, because technically to be impossible to get like, or to be difficult, not impossible, to get like an 18K into the solution and the logistics to manage this golden hour and how quick it goes will be extremely difficult. So we continue and here's another situation whereby we have the sun just above the camera, like it's barely above the camera here. Um, and we can see how it's keen, the lady, but every other person is like into the shadows, right? Because when we get to a close up, there's another shot that's a close up of this. Like if you check first colors, you see she's on the expose. And because the white shot, we still get most of the feel targeting some of the people. But when you go to the close up of this shot, yes, here, now you get to see some vignetting on the lens because we have dark corners. Maybe it was created in post or it's the lens. But I'm guessing my bet's on post, given how it's looking. You get. But you can see her now. She's now keyed at neutral gray on the right side of her face. The left side is one stop on the expose. You can see the background where the sun is totally nooking out because you can see it's now six stops overexposed where you have like the sun literally hitting the water. You get. So yeah, it would have been nice if this was not the hottest part in the frame to make her the hottest in the frame. So our eyes go here first because when we look, we just look directly into what's the brightest thing that we can see. You get, and everybody else is lost in the shadow and this is like, um, there's nothing like the sun. 
you get like you can compete with that source like you probably spend 20k of of power and probably a couple of more hmis to be able to create this kind of high powered look and maxi brutes but the sun and the mirror you could cook this up on your own very skill like you could replicate this on your own skill um so yeah then we have this masquerade when in doubt and you're in a music video and you don't know what to do, just roll the camera and use a steady cam. You get it. That's what we have in coming here. The sun is actually coming from the right side because we're still using more natural light. I like this video a lot because it shows what you can do minimalistically without a lot and also be able to achieve um, beauty. Um, the sun is coming from the right side of the frame. We can tell because of the shadows that's being cast by these pine grasses and um, it's not really toppy, so there's still some shape to it. And because the marks are white, the bounce of the coral or this ground would quickly catch some wide soft light. So it's uniformly beautiful, complementing with the color contrast that you can see and the sky that is not super exposed. So yeah, that all makes for a beautiful shot. So we have this black hat, which is supposed to be like Bado Man, and we continue with more um, Spirit of the Gods. And there's a um, steady cam move that goes into him and he catches the spirit and the spirit continues and we have some bureaus more nice bureaus now we see the beginning of the film then these are like bureaus of his journey more bureaus where you see people doing this and we continue oh yeah now here's another interesting shot on the alleyway um this shot is interesting because this is where you actually use the sky as your softbox like before just as the sun leaves the top of the sky which is somewhere here and it's just going behind this building you have this shade in the alley that will give you the exposure that's more looking like to what the girl looks on this side but if you have a mirror you can use that to bring in your a large mirror can bring in your own um um key into the frame and it becomes like your new 18k just simple mirrors and put it high up and you get these shadows like if you check your contrast ratio you can see this side of the face this side is like one two stop under with some patches of neutral gray that's come from mirror spill which is what it should look like in reality because if you see this side this is what the exposure in the alley looks like but the mirror brings in some exposure and you can literally lift up the levels of these people you get and you can see that the sun is actually just over the building as you can see from the sides that are clipping that are like four stops overexposed which is like somewhere here that tells us that the sun is somewhere here um then we continue we have more performance shots where the sun is like a sky um it's on the right side of the frame and you have this visual interest whereby you're seeing these lead lines that are here to create this then um, we have um, light exposure on the dark background which the trees are giving us on this side then dark exposure on the side on the light background then we have the women's in shade so all it's just creating visual interest you get now this one is probably getting lower in the sky from the shadows you can see in his face but also as you can see when we get into the close-up you begin to see things like mirror bounce that they used to lift up this side of the shadows uh, yeah so we continue um, right now it's looking more like a bounce board not like a mirror but i'll show you a side where there's a mirror um, yeah we'll continue with the mirrors in the alleyways and overhead shots great um, now the spirit mother is not communing with more spirit mothers so that's cool and we have like a celebration shot which is really awesome it, i really like the shot because it really looks beautiful um so we continue with more of the bureaus and performance shot then we get to this place where he's actually working and performing and just as he's performing you get to see um he, i'll show you just in a bit we we'll get to a point whereby the performance still continues till um, here. This is the telltale sign of that's a mirror. You can see the levels here. If I turn on first color, you see how here is now at neutral gray. Here is one stop brighter, which is not supposed to be because if we go back, right, you can see um, somewhere around here is actually one stop on the expose. So I guess um, there's a mirror on the other side who, that doesn't get to catch it until he goes in. I can also see the reflection on the leather jacket, how it actually catches the mirror from the hind side of the shot. Like, I guess it was designed to edge him while the normal bounce was just supposed to fill in from the sky. You get it. And yes, and you can see the mirror telltale sign here also. Very obvious. Still a beautiful shot. Then we continue with our normal bureaus. This is like an overcast day. There's no sun, there's no interest, just 
and overcasting, then we have more bureaus and that continues. We cut back to the masquerade shots and just do some camera rolls. When it's getting difficult, we roll the camera. More African dress, facing the sunset, beautiful shot. Just like where um, the sun is now like the key against the sky because that gets like lift the levels and we have like bounce that's filling to the side of her chain. So this will probably be a stop or two over where the skin is set. Exactly, it's almost even close to three stops over, which elevates the shadows that, because you have raised the entire scale of exposure. And yeah, you're able to achieve more of this, more bureaus. Um, that happens, then we arrive at this shot where the sun is backlit in the city and the drone shot. Then we have, we close with this end frame whereby he's sitting on the canoe and the sun is probably just above the camera and we can hold the blue sky and it's actually giving him this um, um, contrast ratio and the lead lines of the shot creates visual interest plus the, um, plus the beds in the background. So. So I guess we've come to the end of this breakdown um, of this video. Um, next week, we would look at another video. I hope this has been creatively useful to you, how you could learn that using mirrors, using lead lines and some other stuff. If you haven't joined in our contest, we have a $1,000 contest that will be announced at the end of July. Um, you can look in the description below. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up, share it to somebody and subscribe. That's the only way you support us you get and be a part of our community. Also, if you have other videos you'd like me to break down, commercials, films, or whatever, just send in the recommendation and we'll do our very best to get to it and hopefully the entire community benefit from it. So until next time, improvise, adapt, overcome.